If you like NECA wafers, the original candy wafer, yeah, that's a category that really took off, there's no need to watch this video. You're going to get screwed no matter what. Same goes if you like those nasty little orange and black candies. Save yourself some time, don't go trick-or-treating, just eat random crap you find on the floor. And now we begin. Step one, identifying your trading partners. Children under the age of five are legally protected. That's because of Becky's Law. Named after a Wisconsin girl who traded her entire stash for a box of Good and Plenty's that her brother had convinced her were unicorn eggs. She cried for three and and a half years. Children between the ages of five and seven are allowed a 30-second trade-back grace period. This also applies to the elderly. If you have friends or siblings with any of the following traits, they make ideal trading partners. If you don't, you'll have to get crafty. Start by determining the flavor affinity of your opponent. There are three basic classes, and each one has a weakness. Be warned that a classic strategy is to pretend that you're in the fruit and sour category while executing the Smarties Gambit for a full-size Snickers. If you'd like to download a PDF version of this chart, please look in your butt. If your opponent says that they like special darks, be kind to them. They're probably going to be your boss someday. Likewise, if they express interest in any of the oral fixation candies like wax lips, paper dots, candy cigarettes, or pop rocks, keep track of them. They're going to be fun to hang out with in college before they drop out. Step 2. Pre-trade organization and preparation. Loose candy corn should be placed with your pennies. They're equally worthless. Under the new health law, ripped or unwrapped candy falls under the protection of pre-existing condition. And although they lose value, you cannot exclude them from trading. Dum-dums should be organized in complete sets, not by individual flavor. Unless, of course, you have three or more root beers, which can be set aside. Lump your three musketeers together with your Milky Ways to ferret out people that don't know the difference. Most likely, they'll confuse Crackles and Mr. Goodbars, too. Hide your Mary Janes, banana-flavored taffies, and any short-lasting bubblegums under a pile of Whoppers, Goobers, Caramel Cubes, and Red Hots. Be prepared to offer the full stack as an all-or-none trade for a Charleston Chew or Grater. Although nerds are technically inert pop rocks, they should be placed in their own category. Unfortunately, Butterfingers, Almond Joy, and Mounds should be set aside aside for the mom and dad tax. Note that there is growing support to repeal the mom and dad tax as it hurts honest candy disclosure and might lead children to stop trick-or-treating altogether. If possible, avoid major transactions until after the election. And raisins should be burned and then peed on by your dog. Part 3, Classic Strategies. Avoid anyone who suggests dumping all the candy in a pile and rationing it out based on hunger. They are Marxists. John Maynard Keene suggested taking 40% of the candy from the children with the most, burying it in the ground, and then giving the candy poor children jobs digging it up. Or, of course, you can try the classic approach. Whatever you choose, remember that Pixie Sticks, Twizzlers, and Smarties are your workhorses, and Fifth Avenues are better than 100 grand. And as for anyone who gave you an apple, don't worry, they're going to hell. Shh, <laughs>